Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I've got a little card to celebrate a job well done. This project features a brand new word and shadow die from me, a new stencil, and just a few simple techniques that we are going to do with a little bit of masking. All right, let's jump into the products that I'm using today. The inspiration for this is my new Woot die. I say Woot all the time, both in text form and in speaking English language form, but I wanted to take it out of the package just to show you how big it is. It's not too big, it's not too small, and it's a shadow die and the word die. I'll be using a sentiment from Everyday Sentiments 2. This is another set from me with a lot of just very all-purpose sentiments. I've got a stencil today, and this is called Triangle Blast. This is a new stencil from Simon Says Stamp that I'll be using to apply some glitter paste. Got my Distress Oxides here, and I've also got some Jumbo Sponge Daubers that I will use to apply. And here is the Glimmer Paste. This is the Nouveau Moonstone. Love this stuff. And I'll be using a palette knife to apply it. I also have a set of Nested Heart Dyes, and I will be using one of those for the project to create a mask. And for my masking paper, I'll be using some of the Inka Dinka Do masking paper. And for cardstock today, I've got some Tangerine Twist from Gina K Designs and some Nina Solar White, the classic crest in the 110 pound. I've trimmed this panel down to four inches square, but I also have an extra piece of the Nina Solar White 110 to cut out my words. And I will be using some Versamark and a little bit of white embossing powder from Brutus Monroe and a few other products as we go. I wanted to show you really quick, if you're new to card making and dies, and you're confused about how to break them apart, these little tremors, they help, they help you do that. That's what they're for. I just thought I'd share that. <laughs> okay, I've got a masking paper cut to four and a quarter square, and I'm taping it down, running that through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine, and I'm gonna keep that heart, because that can be used for another project. And now I'll just peel off the back of the masking paper, and what I like to do is I put the masking paper adhesive side up and I will place my cardstock that I'm going to blend onto right on top. I'm gonna to run my finger around just to seal it to make sure no ink will get in. And so we commence the blending. Distress oxides are wonderful for ink blending. If you struggle with ink blending, and when I'm using regular distress inks, I tend to struggle, distress oxides make it easier. They are creamy, they are forgiving, and they almost seem to just dry smooth once they are completely dry. They are this very cool ink formulation, and I find that I get better success when I blend with the oxides. So, once that's done, I'm going to tape on my triangle stencil. And I'm just kind of placing it so that I can have a few little triangles showing up on my heart. And I'll add the glimmer paste to the palette kind of what I think is the right amount, and then just very evenly spread it over the piece through the stencil, and I try to only go over areas once or twice and have it done as quickly as possible so that it doesn't get too goopy. That's kind of my technique. I always get a little nervous doing this because I think I'm going to ruin the piece, but once I think it's on and nice and even, then I'll quickly peel off the stencil because I don't want it to stick. And then I go stick that in hot water and soak the stencil and the palette because this stuff will dry and stick and then it's much harder to get off. Now I'll carefully peel the mask off and I'm doing this pretty quickly too. I'm not waiting for that glimmer paste to dry because again, I don't want it to create a bond with the stencil area that's on the mask. Now I'll just peel this off. And what's so fun is to reveal the beautiful masking as well as seeing those crisp edges of the glimmer paste, which add shine and dimension to this heart. It's kind of cool, and that shimmer is just fantastic. I'll set that aside to dry, and while that's drying, I'll go ahead and cut out my woots. I'm going to do three of them. This is the Nina 110 Solar White Classic Crest cardstock. It's really sturdy, and I love this for... Well, I like it for everything. It's kind of my all-purpose go-to. Once I get those three cut out, then I'll take my little scrap of Tangerine Twist and run the shadow layer through, and that's the idea, the shadow and the word. 
I'll glue all this together with spray adhesive. I have a little box that I keep off camera. I like spray adhesive because it, it lays down the adhesive so fast and it covers the whole piece. I just tend to hold my breath when I'm spraying. And I can quickly glue them together, wiggle them around a little, and the result is some really nice dimension. And I'll just put a brick on that. And then I'll add adhesive to the back of that and put it on the shadow layer. I really love the look. Again, brick comes on, we walk away. Next, I'm going to get the great frickin' job sentiment. I do like that sentiment. And use my Misty tool to stamp the little strip. I will prep my cardstock with the embossing magic because black cardstock, well, all cardstock, can grab powder in places you don't want it. So powder it up really well. Stamp down that lovely Versamark magical sticky ink. Give it a good press. And then I'll sprinkle on my powder. And this is the alabaster color from Bruce Monroe. It's kind of my favorite white. Tap it off. And if you have any excess, just take a dry brush. Just go over your piece carefully. Get all that extra powder off. And then heat up your tool, bring it to the cardstock. And there you go, shiny white. Hey, Kath, great freaking job. I will use the Simon sentiment labels to cut out my sentiment quickly. I like these because they just take the guesswork out. You line it up on your plate, run it through, and there you go, you have a perfectly cut sentiment. Looks good. Now I'm adding a little bit of thin foam adhesive that I've cut in half to my trimmed down sentiment so that can pop up a little bit on my card. I'm going to score my card at four and a quarter. This will fold down to be square. Press it down just like that. I'll add a little tape just to keep it flat while I'm working on it. Press that down just so it doesn't pop up. Now I gotta show you, I just ordered the ginormous roll of 3M foam tape. My first one, I purchased in January of 2017 and two years, thank you, two years. It does last. So I'm gonna pop this panel up right on my base with that nice little margin of space. And then I'll add the sentiment strip, bringing my T-square in just to help me get that one placed first so that I know that it's straight. And once that's on, I'll use a little Gina K Connect glue to just sort of dot all over the back of the woot, and that will be a great adhesive for holding it onto the front of my cart, just like that. I'm gonna hold it in place for a second because it tends to move a little, because it's liquid. And again, another brick, press it down and let that completely adhere. To finish off this card, I'm adding a few sequins. I just went and picked out a bunch of the confetti in this set that was orange, and I used the Gina K liquid glue for that as well. And I think that creates just a nice, simple finish to my what? Great freaking job card. And that's it. A little bit of shine and shimmer with that glimmer paste and that random pattern along with the woot. I know exactly who I'm going to send this to. All right. That's the card project for today. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to have you become a subscriber and I'll see you back here with another card project soon.